long-term investment is in focus. The stock has surged around 70% this year so far. During its conference call, it indicated that the new business loan NPAs are below industry norms. Early vintage delinquencies have shot up, but it is not a concern right now. To discuss this and more, we have uh, Arun Sel Selvan, um, the president and the chief financial officer at the company joining in. Hi, sir. Thanks very much for joining in. Well, if we could just start by talking about your partnership business. There was some amount of a cautious stance which was taken in on the partnership business. Can you just explain to us... Um, you know the details of it what were the gross NPAs there and why the caution see uh, the partnership business is a very small part of our business it's around 1.5 percent of our total assets we have around 10 partners whom we are working with of which we saw some higher spurt in delinquencies with the two of them so we have we have said we will be slowing down with them and so we have we have reduced our output with them while with the rest of the partnerships we have been you know moving ahead with whatever is our as per our plans um, uh, we we will certainly have a relook at it, considering the revised RPI norms and higher you know capital uh, risk weightage etc. So we will we will have a slightly higher pricing and uh, you know higher this thing. But it is not due to uh, higher losses for the rest of the partnerships, other than the two which I mentioned. Okay. All right. Hi. Good morning, Mr. Selvan. Nigel on this side, and always good to see you in. Well, could you tell us, you know, the RBI had come out with these new rules just a couple of weeks or so ago. So how much of your book will fall under this unsecured category? See, if you look at the com uh, con entire consumer and sec uh, sec uh, you know, uh, consumer and small enterprises loan business, we have around 6% of the overall book under this. This is unsecured. But... Almost four percent, uh, almost uh, four percent out of the six percent is lent to businesses, and so they do not come under the consumer lending, though they are unsecured in nature. Our way, our way regulation is to address the consumer lending, which is towards discretionary spendings, etc. So I believe that this will be exempted from this particular, uh, you know, uh, higher risk weightage. The balance. Okay. 2% or the one and percent I was talking about is what would come under the uh, under the purview of the new RBI guidelines. Rest of all our portfolio are secured and also of uh, business purposes where they are not, none of our portfolios are towards discretionary spend. Mm. Okay. All right. So effectively, only 2% of your entire book will be impacted by these changes in terms of RBI regulations, right, Correct. sir? Correct. So that yes. would so that. That wouldn't be a very big impact then. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, that is not. Sorry, that's not a big difficult. impact. And consider, considering the fact we also raised equity recently, I don't think uh, providing a <laughs> incremental risk weightage of 25% on this uh, on this book is not going you to. You want to quantify it, Mr. Selvan, in terms of capital adequacy? How does it impact you and the cost of funds? Uh, you know, uh, how much does it? Uh, you know, how does it impact both these two ratios? On the capital adequacy, because of this particular portfolio being higher risk weighted, weighted, it would impact us by around 15 to 20 basis points. So the capital adequacy will drop around 15 to 20 basis points. So on the interest cost, that's a slightly different, uh, you know, approach because the interest cost will go up on the bank borrowings, which are not of priority sector. If you look at our total borrowing, we have around 1.1 1, 1 crore, 1 lakh crore uh, borrowings of which around 50% is bank borrowing. But out of the 50%, almost 25-30% is priority sector borrowing. So those will not get impacted. The balance would get, you know, slightly higher priced as they come up for repricing. We are seeing the impact of this on the borrowing cost, overall borrowing cost would be in the range of again 15 to 20 basis points on a higher risk, a uh, higher uh, uh, cost towards non-priority sector-based borrowings. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so overall impact when you borrow from banks could be, uh, sorry, overall cost of borrowing could go up 15, 20 basis uh, points, right? Correct. On that Correct. one lakh crore, one uh, plus uh, borrowing Correct. that you have. Okay. And this is all, <clears throat> you're able to pass this on. Uh, 
straight to straight. Yeah, that's what I was coming to. How to mitigate that would be a, a you know mix of various uh, approaches. One certainly will pass on some part of it. Some part of it we will negotiate with banks and try to you know bring back, bring a little bit down on it. And then we have the opex and the NCL lines to also work on to make sure that the committed three and a half percent rota pre-tax would uh, be delivered as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Mr. Selwyn, uh, <clears throat> just two points. One, you said that 6% uh, unsecured and you said the impacted portion is 2%. Is there, uh, <clears throat> you, are you waiting for clarity from the RBI or this is settled, I mean, in terms of what you need to do here? Increasing. Uh, you know, it is a, it's a mix of, it's not, may not necessarily come from RBI, but it would be an approach we would have to discuss with our auditors and also look at the industry practice and take a call. The 20 basis points increase uh, would, you know, would, uh, is considering all of them as a, as a unsecured, not necessarily the 100%. Okay, just a second point. It would point. improve, yeah, it would improve. Sorry, go on, please. Improve. It would improve or it will be slightly lower if it could, if it has, if it is done by the rest of the, only the particular one and a half, two percent of the book. Okay. Mm. You know, many uh, fin financial institutions we spoke with also spoke about the, uh, one is of course the actual impact and what it does, but you know, this is caution from the RBI, that's a good thing because otherwise asset quality, etc. has been holding very good in the system. Uh, you know, we're perhaps at peak rates, so rates will start to go down, that's another trigger. So this caution is yeah. well uh, taken. Uh, would you would you slow down overall? I mean, uh, your <clears throat> unsecured book and your plans there. Could you talk to us about that? Because some have. Yeah. See, the way it will happen is we need to price the higher risk weightage into the uh, cost of this uh, lending. So when we do this, automatically there will be some impact from the uh, borrowing uh, from the borrower side that they they may find it a little expensive. But as I said, while we would be slowing down with regard to those uh, two uh, two partnerships where we are having a certain amount of um, clusters, but with the rest, we are continuing as per our plan. As of now, we'll see how it works out because if the pricing works out unfavorably and that leads to drop, we are not going to compromise that by, uh, in, you know, uh, relaxing the underwriting norms. Our underwriting norms are set, so basis that we would be going with a slightly higher pricing. Could you tell us who are the two part two are the part two partners? Could you? Oh no, sorry, that may not be it right. And that uh, no, so I'm just trying to understand whether this was <clears throat> entity, two entity specific issues or is it a uh, is it a more uh, generalized issue? Since you're going ahead no, with the eight, is, but uh, slowing down with the two. Uh, no, it is an entity specific because some of them are new startups also, so they may have become a little adventurous in what they were doing. But uh, I think the traditional or the 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 partnerships which which have been for a longer time are, are continuing to be doing a good job on that. Okay. Just quickly, sir, before we let you go, your outlook on your AUMs, best in 8 to 10 years, your asset quality improved in the previous quarter to 4.07, but it's still high as compared to, say, the previous quarters that we've seen for the company. On both these parameters, one, do you expect this kind of momentum on your AUM to continue? And two, in terms of gross NPA, what are you targeting, say, by the end of the fiscal? See, the asset growth will moderate over the next two quarters. If you look at last year, the first two quarters were when we had not scaled up the loan against property and the home loan as well as the new businesses. And the last two quarters of last year was where we scaled up. So basis that, uh, you know, that denominator effect, you will see some amount of uh, moderation from the 40% levels of growth or 35, 39% 30, levels of growth to a slightly lower growth. And I, as I said earlier, we should end the year with anywhere between 25 to 30% growth for the full year, year on year. Uh, with regard to the asset quality, the <coughs> percent you're talking about is basis the RBI new norms. And so mm. this was not having a real comparison prior. So if the real comparison would be stage three, which is the 90, but 90 days overdue, which we have also diverged in our investor presentation, yes, you could see mm. that that has come down almost to pre-COVID level. Uh, and it will improve further over the next two quarters. As you all always know that the third and fourth quarters are the one where the NPA numbers come down. So the 4.07 RBA new norms will also come below four in the coming two quarters. And mm -hmm. the stage three numbers should also moderate. 
All right. Mr. Sullivan, very quickly, before we let you go, a couple of, uh, you know, directional, uh, uh, you know, questions with regard to your business. Non-auto, I think, is close to around 40% now of the mix. How do you see that shaping up going ahead and by when? Uh, you know, if you could give us a broad outlook about, between non auto and non-auto. And the second part is, some part of the street is expecting a rating upgrade, say, in the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, would that be fair? I think AAA is what you're gunning for. Uh, tell us more. Yeah, see, the uh, if over the next two to three years, the auto com auto part of our AM would be in the range of around 50%. Uh, and the mortgage business would be in the range of uh, around, uh, you know, uh, 30%, I would say, a bit 30, 35% between the home loan as well as the loan against property. And the rest of the businesses, the new businesses would comprise of around 15%, of which the unsecured should be in the range of around 8 to 10%. Uh, with regard to rating upgrade, yes, uh, we 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 are working on it. But I I I am I mean it, it's impossible for me to say what is in the minds of the rating agencies. Yes, we would love to have a rating upgrade, but uh, we have brought in capital and we are looking forward to it. But uh, it's purely up to the rating agencies to decide about it. Some brokerages are expecting it between 12 to 18 months from now. You think so? I would be happy if I could get it earlier, but I guess I can. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thanks a lot. Uh, on that optimistic <laughs> note, we let you go. Always good hearing your thoughts. Wishing you well for the end of this year and looking forward to chatting with you in 2024 as well.